Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new video. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. When you're just absolutely addicted to the game of basketball like I am, you're constantly watching film, you're thinking about players' career trajectory, and you're like, what if it went in a different direction? What if they got drafted to a different organization? What if there was less pressure on them? What if they were drafted lower? If they were put in a different role to really put their team in the position to be successful, or maybe be that second or third option. So who I'm thinking about today is Lonzo Ball. Lonzo Ball is obviously selected second overall to the Los Angeles Lakers back in the 2017 NBA draft. And there was tons of hype behind Lonzo Ball. He was getting comparisons to Jason Kidd. He was getting comparisons to Magic Johnson. His father even put so much pressure on him to the point that he said in an, in an interview, Lonzo Ball, his son, is better than Stephen Curry. I really understand having a lot of confidence in your son, but you also just put a giant target on his back. And Lonzo has shown that when he's been hit with adversity, he's been able to overcome it, and he's gotten better when his years have gone on in the NBA, but it seems like maybe he's not going to be able to overcome adversity at this point. But Lonzo Ball was just a great manipulator with the basketball, one of the best passers coming out of college at UCLA. He showed the step back dagger against Oregon as well. He had a funky looking jumper, but it went in. He showed versatility on the defense side of the basketball. He had length, he had height at the point guard position. He was able to do pretty much everything out there on the floor. It just all came down to the mechanics of his jumper. So LeVar Ball has this big baller brand you know he's putting all this pressure on him and I understand there's pressure that comes with being a top three pick you sign up for that but it's a totally different story when your father's putting even more pressure on you to be this generational talent be the next big thing and he definitely did get hit with some adversity in his first summer league game I'm not saying it was all on his father but maybe there was a lot of overthinking in his head that he was not able to connect on a lot of outside jumpers he did show the ability to distribute the basketball remember the first play of the game he threw that alley-oop to Brandon Ingram but he could he did not get a lot going offensively at all. He was not able to finish at the hoop, but he was able to overcome adversity and really go on to thrive in NBA Summer League, winning Summer League MVP. That was a very fun Lakers team to watch when it came to the Summer League. You had Josh Hart there. You had Brandon Ingram there as well. I believe Alex Caruso was there. They had tons of talent. Zubac as well. Zubac. So give credit to Lonzo Ball, he really overcame the adversity there, but what really came was the first game, you know, the LA matchup, you're taking on the Los Angeles Clippers, and Lonzo Ball finishes with three points, he was able to grab a few rebounds, make some solid plays out there, but for the comparisons he was getting to, to Jason Kidd, being this big time savior, the Lakers have been through a lot of shit, Lon LeBron wasn't there, you know, the Kobe era is over, so all Lakers fans are looking at Lonzo as this next big thing, he's gonna be that guy, and he goes goes out there and doesn't have the best of performance, at least statistics wise, and really putting a big time impact on the game like you would want from a second overall pick. Patrick Beverly was getting up in his jersey, being extremely physical with him, and he did not meet expectations his first game. At the end of the day, it is just the first game. There's tons of pressure on you. You know, you're better than Stephen Curry. You have your own sneaker. It's like it's like Mike like Michael Jordan or they're treating Lonzo like he's MJ, you know, he got the sneaker entering the league already, like he's gonna be the shit right off the bat, but he did go on to respond with a very good game versus the Phoenix Suns, you know, you should he showed his skill set on the defense side of the basketball, distributing the ball, getting out in transition. His offensive flow was there when it came to scoring the ball. And his rookie year, he definitely didn't live up to expectations. Like if you were expecting him to win rookie of the year, that did not go on to happen. He was one of the most inefficient offensive like offensive seasons from a rookie or especially someone drafted that high he didn't even shoot 40 percent from the field he didn't even shoot 40 percent from three but he did show the ability to be a triple double threat rebound the basketball distributing the basketball and show length on the on the defense side of the basketball as well so just because his offensive skill set wasn't there quite yet scoring the ball doesn't mean he couldn't be a good player so he did show that a couple seasons with the los angeles lakers obviously lebron came over as well and things did go on to change the three-point shot still wasn't there though and he did tweak some mechanics so at times it was like oh things are getting better oh things aren't really getting better so LeBron goes in his little GM mode he's like we're trying to win a championship we're trying to just take over LA again we're trying to win that cha championship when Le LeBron went there Lonzo's included in a deal to get sent to the New Orleans Pelicans for Anthony Davis obviously another big time player in that deal of Brandon Ingram and when Lonzo Ball goes over over there 
he may he may not be putting up crazy points but i feel like he's just more confident he's in a smaller market which was good for him when you're in la there's just so much pressure on you everywhere you go social media is on you again that's what comes with being a top three pick but it's totally different for everyone and there's a human element when it comes to the game of basketball so he goes over to new orleans he may not be averaging a crazy amount of points but he's still just driven the ball he's more physical because he's getting stronger which helps him out on the defense side of the basketball he's rebounding the basketball but he's a better three-point shooter. He went from a career 30% three-point shooter his first two years with the Los Angeles Lakers to his mechanics being tweaked to shooting damn near 40% from three with the New Orleans Pelicans. And you can give a lot of credit to Fred Vincent for that, who's actually one of the best shooting coaches in the NBA. And if you look at his mechanics now, or at least when he was out there on the basketball floor for the Chicago Bulls or a couple years with the New Orleans Pelicans, yeah, his mechanics look good. They looked they looked fluid, and he was able to knock down the three from beyond the arc. The thing that did hold him back, I mentioned the defense. I mentioned, like, he was his ability to see things before they happen is insane. His ability to run the pick and roll to perfection, the pace, the tempo he plays at. He knows how to make those kick aheads, push and transition. Definitely makes his teammates better in that regard, setting his teammates up for easier shots. But there was an inefficiency of finishing at the basket. You would have liked to see him finish with more authority. You would see the really athletic plays when he finds an open crease in the defense where he's able to just split down the lane or when he's just in transition there's open space but he did have kind of a lack of touch at times when it came to finishing at the basket he didn't really get to the free throw line a lot as well so there was a level of aggressiveness that wasn't there but you did see an improvement especially as as next year in New Orleans as well when it came to sometimes you saw a mid-range jumper you saw him go back to the off the dribble three-point shot he definitely looked more fluid as a basketball player but where I thought everything changed he was a good player in New Orleans I felt he had more confidence and he deserved a payday and he ended up getting paid by the Chicago Bulls when it came to free agency and he probably the best season of his career even though he didn't play tons of games because this is the last season we've seen him play in the NBA when it came to the 2021 to 22 season you know when Knicks fans like myself were a little excited when Kemba Walker got signed to the New York Knicks in that 2021 to 22 season he went on to play only 35 games before injuring his knee but Lonzo was literally the glue to that Chicago Bulls team with DeMar DeRozan with Zach Levine with Patrick Williams with Vucevic the Bulls were very aggressive in that offseason that they're like we don't care like we're, we're trying to compete we're trying to win games we don't care if we end up in the plane we don't care if we get bounced in the first round of the playoffs we're trying to build a winning pedigree at least the first year here so when Lonzo Ball was healthy for that small portion of games they were the first seed in the Eastern Conference when it came to like 30 40 30 um 30 something games throughout the season he was literally the glue. They're that first seed. But when he got hurt, everything changed. They dropped that sixth seed because they didn't have that stability at the point guard position. He was literally the glue of he knew what to do with the basketball in the half court setting. He was just so decisive. He was so confident. He was at a whole other level. And you have Zach Levine who cuts. Like he's just so good at recognizing guys moving without the basketball, finding his teammates in the right spot at the right time. And his three-point shot, he shot, damn, he shot 41% from three. He was extremely confident, and you just loved seeing it from Lon's ball. Overall, his field goal percentage wasn't great, but you just loved seeing his confidence go up. You just saw it look like he was going to damn near have a triple-double every night when he was out there on the floor, and it looked like the Bulls were going to result in a win. I felt he was playing with the right personnel that they could cut without the ball. His three-point shot is falling as well. He just really brought stability of way, the way the offense was run, and it was just extremely organized. So when he went down, things just changed. They didn't have that organization. They didn't have, it wasn't really organized when Lonzo Ball went on to get hurt as he injured his knee. And it was so bad to the point, obviously he missed last season, and he's going to be missing this whole up-and-coming season when, like, it's, it's crazy that he's not going to be playing a game this upcoming season because he had three surgeries, and he's looking to make history. He overcame adversity when it came to Summer League, struggling in the first game, bouncing back, winning Summer League MVP. You know, Patrick Beverly bitching him in his first game, bounced back versus Phoenix, he showed some abilities of being some so- a solid player. Obviously, it came down to his offensive skill set. He goes to an organization, there's less pressure on him in New Orleans. His three-point shot is better. He's stronger, he's more physical on defense. The passing's always been there, but it just seemed like everything was clicking with him. Like, he's overcoming adversity, got the bag from Chicago after a couple seasons with New Orleans or being with New Orleans. He's playing well. They're the first seed. He's showing that impact of winning that he showed at UCLA. He's starting to look like that player. Obviously, wanting to be more efficient around the rim and be a little more versatile as an offensive scorer. 
but he's looking to be the first player in history to return after cartilage a cartilage transplant. Three surgeries. He's set to miss this entire upcoming season, and he's missed 35 games as a bull, or he's only played 35 games as a bull. And the contract looked like a steal. It actually looked like good money. Everything was thriving. Then he gets hurt. So maybe they still would have got bounced in the first round, but I honestly just feel bad for Lonzo. I know everyone's going to say, how do you feel bad for a dude that makes millions of dollars? This dude just wants to play basketball. The way he's made that money is from playing basketball. The way he got to UCLA was playing basketball. You know, he worked to be that second overall pick. You can't take that away from him. He hasn't lived up to that status of a second overall pick, but it seemed like he was getting things going. He had the right coaching staff. When Fred Vinson really helped out his jump shot and gave him that confidence, things have been, like, it, things just went downhill. It sucks. He overcame adversity, overcame some hype. It looked like he was on the right page, going in the right direction, and this happens. I hope he makes history and comes back. It just sucks. Let me know down below your thoughts on Lonzo's career so far. Peace out, y'all.